painting party. This ain't your daddy's painting class. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mary Houlihan. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, baby. There's something about Mary. The big riff. Another scorcher. Cool. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Chilling, having a nice time. Hello. Okay, great. All right, then. This ain't. This ain't your daddy's painting class. Woo! Hello, what? Yeah, baby, another scorcher. Welcome to the show. Here we are yet again on another perfect Tuesday night painting together. That's right. Or drawing or whatever kind of art you want to do. Um, at the only show in the world where you're allowed to paint. Mary Wolfhand's painting party. Yep, that's right. And tonight's theme is lo-fi beats to study slash relax to. I think I might have already picked this name as a theme because I think it's a funny phrase. So let me know in the comments if I've already done this theme. And here comes my guest, Maria Rendazzo! Dazzo! Dazzo! <laughs> What's yeah, up? bitch. Yeah. What's up, Mary? Oh, you know, Maria. Have you ever in your life had a um an airbrush T-shirt? You know, like a happy 16th birthday, or like sassy, or I love those T-shirts so much. I definitely I grew up like going to like. Six Flags, mm -hmm. Cedar Point. I'm from Cleveland, and so that's very close to Cedar Point. And there was like, I felt like I grew up in like the golden age of theme parks. Oh, um, sure, yeah. And yes, such a huge <laughs> part of going to theme parks was like the super fun airbrushy stuff. Oh, we also had a Sea World, which I know is oh. like problematic. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, we had SeaWorld, we had Six Flags, we had Cedar Point, we had like everything. Uh, I guess Six Flags is Cedar Point, but that's besides the point. But I would always want these, I would always want these shirts. Um, and you know what? I did, what a guy I dated once got me one as a gift, and it was a great gift. What about you? Do you have any? I've never had one. I've always wanted one. Sometimes I looked at listings for them on Etsy and thought, one of these days I'm going to get some guy to make one and I'm going to have it say cutie or something. But I never pull the trigger. I never do it. So I've decided I'm going to make my own airbrush painted t-shirt. However, um, I don't have an airbrush kit, so I'm going to try to make a painting that looks like one yeah and we'll print that on shirts what you're working then, on right now looks so legit thank you you know i got you know the nice fade you know very airbrush like yes. and, you know i think certainly from a couple feet away maybe even up close people might think this is a real airbrush shirt i don't know yeah um mel schnapp said please tell me that's gonna go on shirts mm-hmm Mm -hmm. You better believe it, Mel Smith. Shirt, shirt, shirt. Shirt, shirt, shirt. Well, let me do just a little bit of mousekeeping. Mousekeeping, that's not a word. Yes, it is. It's like housekeeping, but with this gift of a mouse. So, you know, the show, if you haven't seen it before, it's Mary Woolahan's Painting Party, because I am Mary Woolahan, and I'm painting, and this is my guest, Maria, and um so all of us paint and we chat in the comments like oh my god i'm having so much fun or ha 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 here's a funny riff on what you and maria are saying and you can post your art online live during the show and we'll screen share it Maybe. so you can tweet it with hashtag mary painting 
And please, please, won't you support the show at planetscum.live? Oh, please. Support the show. Support the art. You have to be supporting multiple, multiple mediums of art by watching. I know, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah. Get some merch at planetscum.live slash merch. Oh, that's so good. Mary, you're so good. I'm on here to be real as hell. And I'm here to tell you that you are so very good. And I, I don't know if I've shared this with you. I'm <laughs> legitimately a, I'm very, I'm a very bad visual artist. Oh, good. But I'm here to do my best. And, um, but I do really feel like if I got into ceramics, I could really fuck some shit up there. Yeah, you should, you should get model magic. Uh, Model Magic, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm down. If anybody lives in the Brooklyn area and has tips on like where I should go to make mugs that I can get people, drop them in the comments. Can I see the comments too, Mary, or do you just see them? Yeah, please. Do you see them on the right hand side or do I just see them? Oh. oh. Fingers crossed. Oh, great, great, great. I see them I all. I love it. Great. Now I can see all the comments. This is great. Um, I think I hear some of your lo-fi beats in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you ever watched a lo-fi beats to study slash relax to video? You know, actually, I've never done it on YouTube, but I do listen on Spotify to, like, lo-fi chill nice um i so when you told me the theme for the show i was like you have you have reached out to the correct person <laughs> um i listen to him at work when i'm you know need to focus and if i'm in like coffee shop or something and need to work i'm a person who like i need like really i always went to like the quiet silent part of the library in college to study because I can't handle like any type of outside noise. I love noise. Um, but a lot of times I realize that noise doesn't serve me. I'll be sitting and I'll be listening to a podcast and scrolling uh, on my phone and playing a phone game. And then I'll realize, whoa, I've been in a fugue for 30 minutes. <laughs> Did you say fugue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good fugue. Of course. Um, you know, I thought I'd be real extra basic and bring some wine you got it. to the painting <gasps> party. Incredible. I have Kentucky vanilla barrel cream ale. Ooh. Oh my god. That's so many flavors in one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kentucky. I don't know what a Twitter fugue is, but Oh. I'm down to find out. You ever take uh, you know what a fugue is? You ever take psychology classes? I know what a fugue is. I don't yeah. know what a Twitter fugue is. I think it's like induced by <laughs> Twitter. Like it helps you get to that state. Oh. Um, you know, you're on the subway and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're like, I've been looking at this for 20 minutes and I don't even know if I was reading okay um, i understand like I, I guess you get that with books sometimes you're like oh wait a second i haven't really been absorbing these words and you have to go back a couple pages yep and been, so we do it. that with our phones but we're like reading the dumbest shit on earth and it's like way more embarrassing <laughs> to have yep. like wasted your time not even absorbing the dumbest material ever that's a, at least that's a better way to waste your time, though. If you're reading something important and you wasted your time, that feels like a bigger waste of time. Okay. Like I would, I would Glass like half that. full. What'd you say? Glass half full. <laughs> I am kind of a glass half full person. Are you? Yes. I'll say. I have to watch how, how half full my glass is sometimes because oh. I don't want to be toxic toxically positive 
Okay. All right. I understand. Are you in like a log cabin somewhere? I live in a log cabin, Maria. <laughs> Your background is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've been living in a log cabin since September. It's kind of lonely lately. It's kind of what? Lonely lately. Okay, yeah. But I also don't really feel... I feel like the period in my life where I'm in Brooklyn and hanging out with friends all the time and going out to bars and blah, blah, blah. I just don't know if I'm in that place anymore. And I like living in a, a big cabin for the price I would pay to have a bunch of roommates. Um, you can say that again. <laughs> I think that's great. You gotta like feel out where you are and what you want. Um, and if you're in log cabin mode, I say go full prairie woman. Thank you. You know, I'm trying to write a book proposal about living in a log cabin. Um, yes, you should. What's the angle? Can I ask? Yes. So I've been writing these like short form zines you know, a little micro essay collections called Walden but Good. <laughs> Mary! So, you know, they're themed That's around so funny. disconnecting from modern culture or being saddened by modern culture and hanging out in the woods. And. So I'm trying to pitch it as like a real book with more pages. Um, I think that sounds super interesting. I think you should do it. I'm trying. I hope it works. Um, I feel constantly overwhelmed by everything. Mm -hmm. So the idea of log cabining mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sounds pretty dope to me. I like it. Um, I encourage you to, to pursue Walden, but good. Thank you. What if you go on a book tour? Well, that would be cool. I think that would be really fun. It would be, be fun. A little, a little show. I have to admit, my internet isn't great here. You know, I'm I'm unplugging and replugging that router all the live long day, just like Laura Ingalls Wilder. <laughs> um, my internet is okay. It's my internet's actually pretty good, but I'm but one person in a very small space, so my router doesn't really have to work too hard. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm reading this comment. The regular Kentucky bourbon barrel ale from that brewery is so good. We used to have it on draft at the restaurant I used to work at. What's the restaurant you used to work at and where? Disney World. Disney? I've never worked at Disney. Have you? Me? No. I've heard it's bad. How's my audio, Mary? Is it weird? No, it's good. It's totally normal. It's perfect? Oh my god! He did work at Disney. Do you know this person? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they watch every week. And they have lots of um, Disney wisdom. And sometimes we'll incorporate. Epcot and other things in spare art. Um, I thought that was just the greatest coincidence of all time. <laughs> Saying Disney, then you worked at Disney. Um, you gotta get a painting show, Maria. You I got the most 
painting people. You have to have a painting live stream show. But my art would be absolute trash. Mm. I would have a show where I would do ceramics. Even I'm assuming I'm going to be good at it. What if I'm <laughs> really good at that? You're really into this ceramics thing. I, I really am. I've just been like waiting for the right time, and I think it's about to happen. I think so. You know, I do think you should get model magic or some kind of, you know, and kind of practice with that. Play to play with at home. I'm just really into the idea of like the wheel and like wet hands and wet clay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen ghosts? I know it's very cliche to bring up, but. I actually have never seen ghosts, but of course I've seen parodies of the. Yes. You it's know, an iconic scene to make fun of. I actually watched it for the first time a few months ago. Ooh. It is a mark of its time. Well. Um, what's her name? That's Demi Moore, right? Demi Moore, Whoopi Goldberg, Patrick Swayze. Mm. Um. Ceramics really dried out my hands when I did it in college. Wait, it makes your hands more dry? My hands are so dry. That's Sam Wheat! <laughs> Sam Wheat is the character in Ghost. <laughs> Damn. Thank you for remembering the best detail of the whole movie. Mr. Wheat himself. I miss my fiance, Sam Wheat. I don't think they were engaged, but nice oh. try. <laughs> Good try, Mary. Trying to know ghost. I was about to ask, are they married or engaged? But turns out maybe neither. What'd you say? Maybe they're neither married nor engaged. Um I think they're dating, but you get the impression that it's a serious one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bring my jergens to the wheel throwing. <laughs> God damn it. You can't see, you guys can't actually see my, like how dry they are. My hand, actually, you can probably mm -hmm. see a little like rough patch over here. My hands get so dry that people are like, they shake my hand. I can immediately feel them be like recoil. Just be a little concerned. Mm -hmm. They get scraped. Yeah, I usually <laughs> get and there's blood everywhere. Oh. Mary, what are your hands like? They're pretty good. Um, I'd say they're good? pretty moist. I, I could definitely moisturize them more, you know. I don't always moisturize them. I think I'm moisturizing my face. You know, body and hands, I definitely slack off moisturizing those. Yeah, I slack off on my hands, I guess. Um... Have you ever talked skincare routines on the show? Maybe. What's your routine? Well, come on, dish. <laughs> That's my biggest secret. Um, I I just do like a basic cleanser every day. I do exfoliate with this good, like twice or three times a week. I exfoliate with this stuff that you can get at Target, but I love it. The brand is a Cure. I like the okay. cure a lot. Cure. It's like a green soap scum, or not soap scum. <laughs> it's a green scum. Um, you know, it's like a green sea kelpie thing. I like mm -hmm. the Miss Mr. Thayer's toner. I use that. And then there's another weird brand. Oh, what is it? I can't remember, but it's like some type of a cream I put on at night. That's mm -hmm. kind of, oh, and then my daily moisturizer is just like very basic Neutrogena combination skin moisturizer. I love it. It's never let me down. I've been using it for years. I got to ask, what are your skin struggles? What are your concerns? Oh, great question. Um, Thank I you. struggle with blackheads. Mm, interesting. And I find them the hardest thing to get rid of. Mm. If anybody has any sick tips, please put them in the comments because I'm hideous. <laughs> <laughs> what is your routine? I'll tell you. Um, 
you know, big on SPF, of course. I mean, come Got on, it. look at this skin. Um, I like, um, what's it called? Cerave. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The big tub of moisturizer. Love a tub. And yeah, put a bunch of that on my face and neck at night. Extra these days because this winter, ay ay ay, my neck is so dry. Yeah. I got a rash. I got a rash one week. But ever since I started extra moisturizing, no more rash. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. that's just supposed to show you the power of moisture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They so never really know what they're talking about over there. When they, and they plug moisture. I'm really obsessed with, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't qualify for like a extreme coupon or TV show or anything, but I'm really into deals and shopping around to get the cheapest thing. And, um, I'm always using CVS coupons, and every time they ring me up, I take a lot of pride in that the cashier always says something about, like, whoa, you saved $40. How'd you do that? <laughs> um, so, when the cashier says something like that, mm -hmm. then you know you've really, you've really, like, mm -hmm. cracked the code. You've done something... Oh yeah. And I'm also big on Facebook marketplace. So typically I get the CVS brands, you know, the one that the fine print says compare to Cerave. Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. But I saw a guy on Facebook marketplace and he said, I have a ton of Cerave products. Cerave. Um, and uh, I'm giving them all away, five bucks a pop. And you just gotta meet me in the parking lot of this strip mall. And so I contacted him and I met up with him at a strip what mall. Did I go? And what? <laughs> so I met him in a strip mall, you know, it has Petco and a dollar store and stuff okay. like that. And he had all this Cerave in his car. And I mean, five bucks for these jars that, I mean, whoosh, they're going to be at least 11 at the store. They're going to be at least 11. At minimum. And so I, I asked this guy, I asked him, how'd you get all this CeraVe? I'm glad you and asked. He said, my old roommate was one of those, like, like you ever go on Amazon and see like the someone selling like not for resale items you know what i mean like somehow they accrued a bunch of merchandise and they they're basically like flea market selling it on amazon he was like it's not like a, a weird company in china it's just people like my old roommate doing that so uh, my old roommate left the country and he had all this V, like hundreds of jars and hundreds of other like random products he would sell on Amazon. And so um, this guy was just given uh, a shitload of shit to sell. And you know, every time I go on Facebook Marketplace, he still has all that Cerave. You're kidding me. And you know, it's a shame. It's a shame. I wasn't going to get, I mean, I know you're like $5, which is, you got to stock up, girl. These are big jars. They're going to take me a while to go through. So I've had to, you know, play it safe and just get two or three because, you know, I don't want to be getting a jar now and then using it in 2023. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Doesn't that stuff expire? I think so. I think yeah. So. You can't be using weak CeraVe. So, you know, it's tough to see them going for so cheap and knowing that I have enough and I can't buy anymore. 
I think you made the smart and rational choice in the moment. Thank you. Thank you. And do you still have the product? Is this a recent meetup? Oh, yeah. So I still got them and I still have unused jars. You know, I'm good for a while. You're set. You're set. And let's see. Cleanser. I like a gentle thing. Um, I have a bunch of Neutrogena Hydro Boost sensitive skin, which also I got in like an extreme coupon thing. So I have a bunch of those stocked. Um, but I haven't been using those in the winter. I've been using more mild stuff. Sometimes I'm not even using a cleanser because of how dry my neck is. Yeah, yeah, that can be the end. Sometimes too much soap is going to crack crack mm -hmm. you up. So, you know, I've been playing around with um, Neutrogena Micellar cleanser i was just gonna say you should try the micellar stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so that's just grease that's not so i mean i don't know if it's technically it's grease, grease. But, you know. <laughs> it just slides technical. crap off your face it is kind of weird and it like became really popular all of a sudden i feel like let's see what else what else do i do to my face Mm. That's pretty much it. Um, oh, of course. Sick of hair. I'm into sick of hair now. Wait, what's that? Woo! It's um, it's made by Dr. Jart, and it's like a line of moisturizers that have a. Uh, you know, there's really, really good green stuff in it that okay. counteracts redness. And yeah, you put it on, it looks green in the jar, and then it, you know, it changes colors to look like, cool. like a BB cream that looks like your skin. Dr. Jart, J-A-R-T? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, no, I've never heard of it. Oh, yeah. Can I, so, can I Google it really quick? Of course. So I'm a big fan. You know, I tried it, tried it on a whim a year or two ago, and I have not stopped using it since. It's very nice. Okay. I'm looking up all of the stuff. There's a ton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I use the color correcting cream, and I, I mix it up with, you know, my white moisturizer. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm interested. And it seems like we have somebody who's vouching for it. Mm -hmm. Sample mm -hmm. set of Dr. Jart that works so well. Mm -hmm. Green neutralizes the red. Interesting. I've heard that before. I do love these beets, they're nice. These lo fi right. beats. Oh, yeah. Folks, I'd like to remind you to support the show at plantscom.live and buy merch, please. Come on. How cute. Um, yeah, I need these shirts. Noah, there's a black shirt you can buy. And I'll get this done looking split and send it to the shirt people. Um, somebody wants you to eat, to eat your log, Kevin. You want to eat it? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what's your dog's name again? Happy. 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 So cute. What's Happy doing tonight? Happy! Hello. Are you having fun? Are you having fun with my little pet? He's my baby. Aww. He's my baby. Are you having fun? Are you having fun? 
Love you. Oh my God, he, he right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's so cute. Love you, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I have an update on important an important question asked earlier in the show. They were not married in Ghost. Oh, <laughs> for this update, I I remember that. They were just madly in love. Yeah, Sam Wheat's ghost is just trying to save his girlfriend Molly Jensen, not fiance or wife. Correct. Good boyfriends. Good boyfriend there. Great. Trying to save your life even after they die. That's really nice. Who needs vows? <laughs> Who needs vows when you're dead? Right? Maria, do you want um, to be married? I do. Well, not now, but. No, I do, and I'm ready now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do want to be married, and. I look forward to it, and I'm I'm game. I'm game. What about you? I feel mixed. I'm into monogamy and life partners and stuff. I also could see myself being, you know, like oh, there's Aunt Mary and the guy she's been dating for twenty years. I can see that. Yes. So. Totally. And I think the most important thing is just doing what you want. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, may I ask why you're, why do you, why are you like, oh, I'm not so super interested in marriage? Mm hmm. I guess I don't really know what the point is. Like, I think maybe there's something fun about, you know, pinky promising, let's do this till we die and say it in front of a bunch of people and wear the ring. Mm -hmm. I think the ring seems fun. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't mind wearing a ring and saying, I'm taken. I wouldn't mind a ring. I'll skip the rest. Like but, <laughs> yeah. but otherwise, I feel like, I don't know. I totally get that. Your daily life probably isn't very different. Um, yeah. Wait, somebody's second wedding anniversary. In the <gasps> Congratulations. Oh my Congratulations. goodness. Pandemic couple marriage. I'm sure you were a couple before pandemic, but hello, pandemic marriage. Got to present some challenges for real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So congratulations on your second anniversary. Um, there are some iconic couples who are not married, but have been together for such a long time, like Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Yeah, that's what I want to be. I want to be Goldie Hawn. What'd you say? I want to be Goldie Hawn. They seem pretty damn happy. Yeah. Have you ever seen Overboard? I don't think so. What's that? Mary! <laughs> <laughs> <Does it like> um, <laughs> what'd you say? Is it like ghosts? Uh, it's not like ghosts, but it probably came out around the same time as ghosts. Okay, now I'm going to search this because now I really want to know. When did Overboard 
come out. Uh, oh, 1987. Uh, wait, I think I might be spot on. When I think those come out 87 too. When did Ghost come out? Uh, oh, Ghost was 1990. Okay, I'm not far off though. Okay. Yes, yeah, so only the best Goldie and Kurt film film ever. I agree. Um, I Mary, I think you would love Overboard. What's it about, folks? Uh, yeah, there's a boat in it. Basically, oh. like, Ghost is like very dramatic and like 80s drama, but 90s drama, I guess. But Overboard is fun, and I think you would love it. Um, Goldie Hawn is a very, very rich woman. <laughs> and she's on like her husband's yacht or whatever and she falls off of the boat and hits her head really hard and has amnesia and hilarity and love ensues Interesting. it's good goldie hong's really good in it we're all really good in it They had a gender swap remake with Anna Ferris a few years ago. Really? Oh, really? A little bit of forced slavery in there too. Holy shit, you might be right. I don't remember that. It was a long time ago that I saw it, but. Whoa. It was all for fun. I don't really know that the chill lo-fi beat to bring up, but okay. <laughs> Mary, what's your favorite movie? Wow. Or maybe you could go like decade. Like, do you have a favorite 90s movie or do you have a favorite, like, if that question's too overwhelming, which I find it too overwhelming. Okay, I think my favorite 70s movie. There you go. Airplane. Airplane? My favorite 80s movie is... Um, uh, I think 80s are kind of a weird decade for movies. Yeah. Everything yeah. looks bad. Yeah. Film-wise. Yeah, but that's why I love it so much. Um, my favorite 90s movie is... Oh, my favorite 80s movie is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh my god, I was gonna guess that for you. And my favorite 90s movie. Maybe Billy Madison. Yeah. 2000s, Hot Rod. 2010s. Hmm. 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 I don't know. This is a super, super hard question I, I posed for you. Tomorrow, give me yours. Huh? Give me yours. Oh, God. All right. Um, We already got Overboard and Ghost. Uh, that's true. I'm trying to think of a movie from the 70s that I like. For sure, for sure. I went, oh, oh, it'd be a hard one for me. Um, I don't know. I think I just skipped some. Oh, it's looking so good. Right? That looks real. Yeah. Gotta put some white lines on it. It looks really good. Um. I yeah, love I, Star is my favorite 2010s movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a I funny heard, one. Um, what's up? It's a funny one. Oh, yeah. I heard people love it. I've never seen it. Oh, you would love. Um, You're going to really LOL. You're going to be like, I'm surprised a movie this funny came out. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> um,. I'm more down with 70s music than I am with 70s cinema. 
Mm-hmm. More knowledgeable. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's easy to think of a lot of great films from the 70s. But what kind of weirdo is going to say, oh, you know, my favorite movie is uh, uh, Deliverance. My favorite movie is Taxi Driver. Well, I mean, I guess Taxi Driver is a lot of people's favorite movie. But, you know, 70s, gritty and scary. A lot of gritty, scary movies. Yeah. Oh, what about, oh, what is it called? The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. That's a good 70s movie. What is it? The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. I don't know that movie. It's funny and action-packed. It's like an action comedy, kind of. Can I just say, can I just generally say that I would probably like 70s porn? Can that be my genre? Yeah. I don't even think I've ever really watched it. But from what I know of it, I feel like I'd be like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, I feel like I've only seen it as like B-roll in right. like documentaries. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this is just a product of me watching it in that format and not actually, you know, going out and looking into a lot of seventies porn, but I get the vibe that it's more chill yeah <laughs> back then i think um i feel like all porn now is like uh aggressive and frightening oh yeah it's like <laughs> and i feel like um stuff back then is more like canoodling and yep. sexy and hot yep. music. I agree. I, I will say I agree with that. My favorite 80s movie is probably Moonstruck. Oh, so good. So good. I love Moonstruck. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Got it. Wait, somebody <laughs> said, I hope that makes the weekly recap vid, like Mary's impression of the porn. I <laughs> really hope that makes, that was like so. I was thinking oh, that well. as well as I was doing an impression of. Uh, of it wasn't like, somebody porn. It was by hardcore sex. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. It's kind of scary when um, people talk about the, mm, and I feel like it's a recent phenomenon, of course, because of internet, but like the last 10 or 15 years of people saying, you know, you know, I, I feel like, mm, I feel like we are kind of of an age that it was shortly before the internet got no holds barred insane. Um, so you could experience the internet as like a tween and like yeah. not be totally psycho. True. Um, like I feel like a lot of people talk about how horrible it is that like young men especially like their first uh image of like what sex is supposed to look like is like spitting in people's mouths <laughs> like <laughs> like the most like intense scary fucking shit and not at all like right setting the mood Ooh, these two people are getting hot and heavy right it's, um, it's right. <laughs> porn should just be purely educational from a realistic standpoint yeah i mean you know you should be able to find some freak stuff out there but it sure. is sure. scary to think of you know like a young man having a first sexual encounter and thinking like I guess I'm supposed to choke them now 
because that's what happens in every video I watch. I know, it's so bad. Um, but God, I think about how scared my parents were of me talking to strangers online and got in trouble for it so much. <laughs> That is, uh, that was definitely a thing growing up with like, in the age of like AOL screen names and stuff. It was, it was definitely like a don't talk to strangers time. It's, I feel like that's kind of gone away. Like the whole like don't talk to strangers online. I haven't heard that so much as I used to. Because it's totally unavoidable. Huh? I think because it's totally unavoidable. Yeah, that too. Mm. I don't know. I guess people must tell their kids, like, don't reply to yeah. straight DMs. Yeah. Malia, well, that sucks. Checking the history. No, thank you. If I was a parent, I would be like, I would be like this parent checking the internet history. <laughs> I remember in elementary school and you know the AOL CDs were coming in the mail and that yep. sort of thing. And I mean, this is real young. I feel, this is like, I don't know. It's younger than sixth grade. And okay. I remember a girl in my class, she was bragging to me about, um, like, I had cyber sex with Brian Luttrell the other day. Can you believe? <laughs> And being like, where are you nuts? That's obviously not Brian Luttrell at the time. And like now as an adult thinking of that, it's so horrifying. It's so like, scary. What? I hope that she was making it up. Yeah, me too. Like her attention in the kid way and that she wasn't actually talking to a stranger. Oh, I hope to God. No. I have honestly heard some creepy things about Brian Luttrell, though. Not sexually creepy, but mm, I don't know if you want to get into politics on your lovely painting show, Molly. I'll get into oh, it. What's Brian here. Luttrell doing? What'd you say? What's Brian Luttrell doing? Oh, I just heard he kind of dabbles far, far, far to the right. That's crazy. But... I cannot verify. Let's just ask him. Brian Luttrell, if you're listening. <laughs> are you far right or are you normal? <laughs> um, but you know what I recently was watching and getting such a kick out of? Mm -hmm. um, did you ever watch MTV Spring Break video? Oh, of course, of course. When they'd be like in Daytona Beach and like NSYNC would be performing. Yes, Carmen Electra. Yes. What a time. Absolutely loud. Um, kind of the opposite of chill lo fi beats. I know. <laughs> yeah, lit performing on a stage on the beach with. Walking them yes. <laughs> yes. Say what karaoke live from the beach. Yep. Um, I'm very nostalgic for that period of time. I was in, I guess I was in like junior high around that time. Um, and it just makes me think so bad about like all of the, like I remember like so crystal clear when the Britney Spears like when Britney Spears first album came out. Oh yeah. Um, you know the one where she's like kind of she's like sitting on like the on, her, on the floor <laughs> like this. Yeah. 
like I remember this girl who I went to grade or junior high with, she got it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I cannot believe that she has the CD before I do. Like, what am I doing? I'm such a fool. I have to get the CD immediately. I remember being at a friend's house and her having it. And I had never heard of Britney Spears. And I was like, how do you even know to get that CD? Yeah. <laughs> Did you say, how did you know to get that CD? Yeah. (laughs) How did you know to get that? I know, right? I was like, who the fuck is that? I think it was that, not Simon and Garfunkel. Because I feel like I was like aware of pop music. I was watching MTV and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I don't know. I guess, oh man, was this a time of word of mouth? And like just television telling you what to TRL and all that. I think, I suspect that it was a mom purchase. Oh. And that she was in the store and was like, I heard that kids like this. Mm-hmm. Oh my I god. Heard. I kind of want to see the list of singles, or the, not the list of singles, I kind of want to see the track list on that yeah. CD. Is there a way we could get the track list up? I'd love to see if I can remember any of them. Yeah, I should be able to get that. That would be dope. Well, you know, there's sometimes when she's on the beach with the exercise ball. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Wait, were you a Britney fan? Or like, are you a Britney fan? How do you feel? I was a little bit of, you know, a little punker kid. Yeah. And like, fuck the radio. You were that cool. Sucks. You were cool, and I sucked. No, I was weird. Okay, uh, so maybe I was like doing it too early. <laughs> you were what? I was being old too early, and so it was just like, you, you're weird. Why don't you like what everyone else likes? Um, you were being what too early? I still didn't hear you. Cool. <laughs> oh, too early. You're no really supposed thing. to be cool in high school or something. No, no such thing. You're just m- m- leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of us normies. Um, baby, one more time. Absolute I, iconic. You drive me crazy. Very, very good. Sometimes. Also a hit. Oh my God, Soda Pop. I do remember that song. I don't remember where to make you happy. I uh, remember number six. A lot of music, I was too cool for school to like it as a child, but then as a grown-up, I can more freely admit, like, oh, this song's cool. Yep. Take a look at track number 10. Email in my heart. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, oh that's God. so beautiful. Thank you for this list. <laughs> I wish it was my heart with a hit. Um, I don't remember it being, but there was a lot of hits off that album, though. We really got to give it to her. The craziest thing about Britney Spears to me is like, have you ever heard the people who are like, the way that she sing, like the way that she was asked to sing as a pop singer is not her real voice. Like she actually truly could sing well. And then it just got like morphed into that like baby voice that she did. Yes, I think I saw some music talk a couple of years ago where they were talking about like, uh, Max Martin, and uh, Dr. Luke and, you know, all like the Swedish guys who like write every American top 40 hit from the past 30 years. And they were saying that, I think Max Martin wrote a lot of Britney songs. And so the demos, he would sing them and then, you know, the artist listens to the demo and then sings it in the studio. And uh, all the demos were like, you know, because they're sung by a Nordic person who's, you know, English isn't their first language. 
it's like my loneliness <laughs> link like weird enunciation you know not typical enunciation right um and so she would yeah they said that like her trademark style was kind of a result of just like copying a non-native speaker are you serious that's what they say whoa that's crazy wait why did it sound nordic oh because the songwriters are nordic and um oh. i guess <laughs> there was like i guess it seems like there is a trend i think it probably still is a thing that um a lot of hit songwriters in like u.s and international markets are from the netherlands <laughs> Um, and you know in the tradition of abba yep are they from, are they oh they're swedish right no what's abba yeah i believe and it's um i don't know it's like kind of more the songwriting style over there to write in english because like english is the language that you know sells that's how you get records in the us and the uk mm -hmm. um, so they're really just like coming up with a melody and like how it should sound and then filling in the blanks with words and so that's why the lyrics are all really like simple and kind of like don't actually make sense sometimes i got um, you I like girls who wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I would take her if I had one wish, like stuff like that, that you're like, okay, just reading that out of the notebook, that would sound crazy. Yeah, and you're, that's so, and like, you think those lyrics it's probably- really about like rhyming and rhythm, and that kind of contributes to why they're so good at making hits, because they're not like hindered by trying to say something clever yeah by like logic oh have God. like a nice ring to it i like girls who wear abercrombie and fit <laughs> my loneliness is killing me i must confess i still believe <laughs> like, that's crazy. like that means nothing <laughs> that means absolutely nothing this is a hot tip Logic does trip us up, though. It's true. Yeah, so like ABBA, Ace of Base, um, there is, you know, a long tradition in that part of the world of having, you know, international superstars, awesome songs that take off everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're just so, like infectious poppy. Hey, Mary, we got some viewer art. Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, that's so cutie. That's oh, adorable. I love that. Oh, that's so nice. That's got to be the thumbnail image for the YouTube, for the YouTube upload. That was Daniel Miller, Slappy Phil, correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was Slappy Phil. That was great. Oh. I love the boombox. Mm -hmm. More like Slappy Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. The volume one is a good touch. <laughs> Come on, 
once again, I'd like to remind folks to support the show at plantthegum.live. You know what? If you if you support the show, if you donate a little to our PayPal, and you email me your receipt and tell me your mailing address, I'll mail you some crap. Okay, and guys, what are you waiting for? Get some crap in the mail. Mm-hmm. Email the show. Email Mary Bullahan, xoxo at gmail.com, and I'll send you stickers, buttons, uh, little note from me and happy all kinds of stuff it's our pleasure love it maria do you have anything like fun coming up in your life oh my god yeah um my birthday's in two weeks. Oh! That's pretty fun. Thanks. I'm excited. I want to go roller skating. Mm. Are you good at roller skating? Um, No, but I'm good at dancing. So there you go. If it's anything like... Once I get good at roller skating... Thank you very much. Thank you very much for my birthday. Which? Um, <laughs> once I master the roller skating part, I think that then I would be good because I would just layer dancing on top of it. So mm. I'm fully expecting to get an injury on my birthday. Um, but sure. I, I really want to become like, like my two, I want my two next hobbies to be roller skating and ceramic. Do you have anything fun coming up? <laughs> What do I have? Happy? What do I have going on? Oh, well. I, a dog that I like to dog sit is coming over this week. Thank so I'm you. pretty stoked for that. Her name is Julep. Cute. Brown and cute and nice. Let's see. I'm stoked for, uh, Spring. It's been nice to like go to the dog park and do outdoor stuff. I'm oh, yeah. feeling kind of cooped up. Yes. Um, I know. What else? What else is good? Wait, can I guess your birthday? Sure. Go nuts. Wait, I want to bring it back to amusement parks for a moment. Okay, yeah, good idea. So, what's up? Good idea. So at amusement parks, I mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys had this. Like there would also be like the game section, like where you could like walk up and down and there'd be like, all these like crazy games you could play and shit. Mm -hmm. And there'd always be like people there who would like, like they were, their literal job was just to guess something about you. And if they got <laughs> like, a certain range you had to pay them or if they failed then they give you a dollar or something like that and there was always somebody at the amusement park who would who would guess birthdays and i honestly <laughs> feel like i would just be really good at that job really yeah i'm good at guessing people's birthdays oh well, come on let me try it with you okay um what are you waiting for are you January? Nope. Am I close? With, wait, no, I can't ask you that. Um, you can ask that. Are you... July? No way. December? Yes. Oh, okay. See? Wow. Yeah. Are you end of December? Maybe. Okay, I'll guess. Are you going to guess the day? Right, but that doesn't typically come within my package of what I offer. Oh, okay. But oh, okay. yes, yes, it's towards the end. This 27th? Yep. The 19th? Mm -hmm. 
20th. Uh -huh. 31st. Uh -huh. 29th. Yeah. Okay, I've, I eventually got there. Yay. So you're an Aquarius, right? Good. No, I'm a cat. You're a cat. Believe it or not. What? Believe it or not. You do strike me as an Aquarius. I will say that. People are always shocked to find out that I'm a cat. Really? Because uh -huh. of my warmth. Because of your warmth? <laughs> I know a lot of Capricorns who are extremely warm. Well, you know, you go read some, uh, some meme pages about uh, astrology. You're going to see a lot of cat hate. That's not right. Mm -mm. They say we're boring. We're work horses. They say we don't have emotions. When we do. That's not fair. I know. I do. All the Capricorns I know are extremely hardworking. I will say that. Very good mm -hmm. at working and are very hardworking. And every single time I talk to you, you're working on a cool project or you're doing stuff. So I will say for me, that holds true for you. But I find you very warm. Thank you. Well, you know, why? Why? My rising sun is a Libra. Oh, okay. So that adds a lot of warmth. My rising is a Gemini. Mm -hmm. And some people might say no to that. And I say, I am who I am. <laughs> um, hey, do you want to see what I've made? I would love to. My goodness. Okay, so it's like a very... Wait, I just clicked on something that like changed the way that this looked. Or did the producer do that? Okay, maybe he did that. That was okay. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're big on purpose. Okay, cool. So this is a very basic thing. But I kind of just made like a bunch oh, of... Oh, that's so cool. A bunch of patterns. That's very cool. I like it. Does anyone want to make this an NFT? <laughs> yeah, everyone who watches this is really into a uh, blockchain okay, perfect. perfect. Oh, this person thinks it looks like bowling alley carpet? Cool. Oh, that's a really good compliment. I'm like sadly proud of this. I think it's cool. Thank you, Mary. I'm a real artist. Okay, so I have painting parts. Oh, love it. Mm -hmm. It's almost there. Yeah. Oh, what's this for us? Ooh. <gasps> what? Oh my goodness. It looks like the YouTube. That's really good. That's really cool. That's a really good idea. And this is from Noah. And we also have a mic. Oh my god, that's so cool. I you guys love are really those. good. You guys are really good. Do you want to banish me from the show because I'm I am I am so bad at this? Mm -hmm. You're kind of <laughs> average, I would say. <laughs> Are people voting to banish me in the comments? No. No, they're saying yes. That I know, wrong. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, oh, I'm kidding. Okay. Thank you for your support. No. Most of the guests are comedy people or uh, people I like talking to. And oh, great. Uh, also have worries that they're really bad at art. <laughs> no way. Well, Maria. Will you do me the honor of waving at the camera until Boris turns off the show? I would be honored. Thank you for having me and thank you everyone. Yay. Goodbye everybody. Bye. See you next week. Your art was so good this week.